A set of jeans that make you a fighter. Possibly it happens in bugs and boxers. When the right situation is established, they're going to fight. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. Bob Lucky Severson. We've got a lot of names for it. Flying off the handle, seeing red, going berserk, running amok. Although, come to think of it, I'm not sure how you run amok. About running amok. Amok comes from the Malay word amok, meaning being on a rampage. It dates back to the 16th century and the first contacts between Europeans and the Malaysians. One suspects the accounts of this phenomenon may have been melodramatic and culturally biased. Our electronic encyclopedia is supposed to fill in only background information, but it seems to be developing a mind of its own. The question is not about the meaning of amok. It's whether or not there are genes responsible for aggressive behavior. Whatever aggression is, we know it when we see it. Mike Tyson earlier this year at a news conference announcing his upcoming fight with Lennox Lewis. This dust-up may have been staged, but Lewis says he came away with tooth marks in his leg. When two boxers go at it in the ring or at a news conference, we can see the fight. What we can't see are the physical and chemical changes taking place in the fighters' bodies and brains, the chemistry and genetics of aggression. We want to understand how a complex behavior like aggression um, is brought about by the nervous system of organisms. To avoid the problems inherent in studying human fighters, he looks at aggressive behavior in animal models, especially in lobsters. These are two-year-old lobsters raised in isolation at the New England Aquarium, especially for this study. When we fight the animals, we want to make sure that they haven't developed a strategy to fight. So in keeping them separate, we know they all have the same history and they don't know how to fight. So everything we see is like inborn, programmed in the animal and hasn't been modified by experience. So we have the same baseline for all fights. Two of the untrained lobsters are put in a tank. And in the left corner, it's Northern Lobster in blue, weighing in at three ounces. In the right corner, it's the Pink New England Lobster, also weighing in at three ounces. When you take this divider out, there's a new territory for them to explore, so they start exploring it. And then they find that there's someone else in the new territory. And the someone else is uh, someone that they then start fighting with. With no fighting experience of any kind, the lobsters still seem to know what to do. Their aggression response takes over. And don't disappoint us. No. They won't. Imagine the first round in a fight with the two boxers kind of just feeling each other out. And this is exactly what you're seeing here. These guys are feeling each other out to see who's going to be the one, you know, who's more vulnerable and how am I going to get them. Then the encounter escalates. It's not just one gene, but a complex set of genes that work in aggressive behavior. These genes produce compounds that trigger and support that behavior. Ed Kravitz is looking at one in particular, a neurotransmitter called serotonin, a substance, interestingly enough, that occurs in people, too. There's a circuitry where one nerve cell communicates with the next nerve cell, communicates with the next nerve cell, and then something happens. Serotonin doesn't seem to function in that way. The nerve cells that contain serotonin seem to function very much in the way that a, a dimmer switch works. The lobsters will remember who wins and who loses this fight for about 10 days. If they meet again, the loser will back away. If a lobster loses a lot of fights, it can develop a loser mentality and refuse to fight with any animals. Inject serotonin into the loser, however, and the fighting instinct is aroused again. The nerve cells of lobsters are big enough that Kravitz can study the chemistry and physiology of aggression. But to look for genes behind the urge to fight, Kravitz has to turn to another fiercely aggressive animal. 
So this isn't an ordinary refrigerator. This is where we keep our fly stocks. Fruit flies, unlikely contenders perhaps, but their genome, not the lobsters, has been sequenced. And that makes them ideal for the study. Kravitz will analyze many fights between fruit flies to establish a reference for normal fighting behavior. Then he'll begin to introduce fruit flies with genetic mutations to see how the mutations affect their aggression. We're going to try to work with mutations that alter the function of serotonin containing neurons in the, in the brain. And for example, steroid hormones like testosterone are believed to be important in aggression in people. There are steroid hormones um, that are somewhat different in structure than testosterone in flies, but they exist, and we will look at those hormones. Students Selby Chen and Ann Lee are the fight promoters that and keep like track of the fight data. Lost its interest. They so set up a kind of ring for the fly fights with special lighting, a cup of food, and a female to fight over. It's like a prize fight, except the flies don't get names. So they get stuck with names like yellow one, yellow two. Well, we didn't want to become too attached, you know, yeah. because they are, they are going to die. So if <laughs> creates a bond that is very hard to dissolve. <laughs> like the lobsters, these flies have never seen another fly. But when the right conditions are present, they know what to do. You can do it, we know. After they size each other up, neither wants to fight. The time this usually happens is when um, a granting agency comes by to do a site visit, a review of your, <laughs> of your project. Despite the strict controls on the fighting environments and the genetic makeup of the flies, each fight is different and the outcome unpredictable. A typical fight usually starts with something called wing threats. The aggression escalates to boxing. The flies get up on their hind legs and duke it out. When the right situation is established, um, they're going to fight. Um, so it's a situation-specific behavior that's assembled by, by uh, putting together circuits of neurons and by hormones being released that are going to um, impact on those circuits of neurons. In human beings, um, we don't anticipate that anything very different is happening. What we're going to do with that information, how far we can extrapolate that information, um, we don't know at, at this point. Uh, but having some insight is better than having no insight in this situation. One of those insights is that fighting behavior in all species of animals involves the same components. Dr. Kravitz and his colleagues list three stages of aggression in lobsters and fruit flies. One, limited aggression where weapons are displayed and the fighters bump each other. Two, mid-level aggression with much pushing and shoving. Three, high-level aggression, slugging it out. There is also a final stage where the loser stops fighting and the winner displays his prowess. These stages may seem familiar to humans who have seen a barroom fight or a boxer's news conference. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.